Whoa. Have you ever seen the Big Dipper? Oh, there's the North Star. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty out here. Fourth graders, I cannot get over the stars in the sky. Have you just sat down some night and looked up at the sky and just looked at how amazing they are? Have you ever wondered how they got there? Well, stay tuned because we're going to talk about that today. Our lesson today is called How the Stars Fell into the Sky. So, we're going to learn today how the stars got there. We are starting another legend. So, if you saw right here, it's called a Navajo legend. And remember, a legend is a story that is passed down and it is important to the culture. So, we're in a different culture today. Um, why the Sea of Salty came from the Philippines. Now we're with the Navajo. And this second story shows us how different cultures understand and interact with nature. So this is what the Navajo say, how the stars ended up being up in the sky where they are. So our learning tension today is, we are learning to analyze what characters in a story say and do as they solve an important problem. So problem and solution. We know we are successful today, when we can identify the problem in the story and identify how the characters try to solve the problem. We're gonna use this diagram to help us. So you might wanna pause the video now and draw this so that you're prepared for when we get to this later on in the lesson. Your foundational skill today is about dogs that are lending a helping paw. So dogs can be good friends and helpers to people. So you're gonna learn all about how they can help us. And you're really focusing on those prefixes of dis, re, and non. Which again, do you remember what those mean? Dis and non both make the word mean the opposite of the root word. Then we have re, which means you're doing it again. Good job. All right, so for vocabulary today, our first word is pulse. From the story, it says, when the pulse of the first day carried it to the rim of the night. So, and then another way I thought of pulse is when you go to the doctor or when you don't feel good, sometimes they check your pulse. What could it mean? Hopefully you knew that pulse is a beat or rhythm. So it's a way to describe the movement of time. What about this one? I know you've all felt this way before. When you're ready to eat and you might have to wait, you're impatiently waiting, right? From the story, first man turned back impatiently and looked at her squatting there at the end of the night. Then I have these people sitting here impatiently waiting to see somebody at the office, maybe. What does that mean? We've actually talked about a word that's a synonym it actually means the same as eager. You're not patient, you're restless, you're ready to go, you're ready to eat or see whoever it is you're waiting for. All right, guys, I'm so excited to start the story with you. Just look at these pictures, the colors are so cool. So this is actually a retelling of a legend told to the Navajo Indians by Hostine Claw, their great medicine man, at the turn of the 20th century. It is part of the mythology that details the mysteries of Earth in the beginning. So let me get my arrow ready and we're gonna start this story. So we got these beautiful pictures with all the colors. All right, when the pulse or the rhythm of the first day carried it to the rim of night, first woman said to first man, the people need to know the laws to help them we must write the laws for all to see. Write them in the sand, he told her, but the wind will blow them away, she answered. Write them on the water then, he said, and turned to go having more important matters on his mind. But they will disappear the moment I write them on the water, first woman called out. 
first man turned back impatiently and looked at her squatting there on the rim of the night, a blanket of stars at her feet. Look at that, all the stars sitting here for her. Why don't you write them in the sky, he said. Take your jewels there and write them in the sky. Oh my gosh, we're already done today. That is insane. So what is the problem so far in this story? What do they want to do? Let's look back at the very beginning. So these are the first two people that ever lived is what they believe. First man, first woman. And first woman has a problem. She wants to help the rest of the people that come after her. So she says, the people need to know the laws. We must write the laws for all to see. So that's the problem. They're trying to figure out, people need to see the laws in writing. They need to know what they can do and what they can't do. But where do we put them? So do you guys remember what first man said they should do? What should they do? Let's look back. What was the first idea that he gave? He says it right here. Yeah, good job. He said, just write him in the sand. So that could be your solution. So pause right here. Make sure you're filling this out with me because we're going to really look at the problem and the solution. But is that the solution? Did they fix it? That's the answer? Nope. First woman said, there's a problem with that. What's the problem if you write something in the sand? Have you ever written something in the sand? Exactly. If you write something in the sand, what does she say? She goes, but the wind will blow them away. So it's not gonna stay. If I put all this effort into putting the rules in the sand, it's not gonna stay. The wind will blow them away. So then what does he say to do next? Like, okay, well then write them somewhere else. And so they keep trying to figure out what's the best solution to their problem. Good job. So you can keep filling this out without me, but we're gonna move on to the next question. All right, so we have a question about our characters. We have two characters, first man and first woman. It says, in what ways do first woman and first man act differently? So show me where the text makes you think they're different. So let's go back here. So right away she said, we need to help the people, right? And he just goes, write them in the sand. She goes, but that's not gonna work. And he goes, well, write them in the water. And then this is the big thing that stuck out to me. He turned to go having more important matters on his mind. What do you guys think? Yeah, so that, that thought that he has more important things to do, it's kind of crazy because first one's like, this is very important. And then right here it says, he turned back impatiently. So he was getting kind of annoyed with her. He's like, I have other things to do. Why do you keep asking me questions kind of thing? So what does that show you about him? Does he care that much about the laws? Not really. And it kind of seems like back here when he's like, just do it this way. Just to do it that way. Just do it that way. He's kind of like bossing her around a little bit. He's like, just write it on the sand. Just write it in the water. So it's kind of just bossing her around a little bit. Kind of crazy. But then you have first woman over here that really cares about the laws and is willing to think about it for a while and make sure it's perfect before she acts on it. So good job, fourth graders. So yeah, that's the big difference between first woman and first man. Now for your turn. Who do you think is better at solving problems? First man or first woman? Then you're gonna explain why, you're, why you chose your answer. Where is it in the text that you can find your evidence that supports your opinion? Thank you for coming today, fourth graders, and I was so excited to start this new story with you. Have a great rest of your day.